Hey everybody, today we're going to learn how to create basic forms using React. You're going to be using forms quite a lot in your career, so it's good to know how they work and the basic idea behind them. We're going to start by adding a state object to hold our form fields. So we have three fields that we need to know the state for. We will take a new line at the top of our app function. We'll type const, open our brackets, and we will call this state value values. And then we'll call the function to let us change the values, set values. That's going to be equal to use state and we're going to open our braces. Now the initial state is going to be an object and this object is going to have three values, one for each of these fields. So call them similar to what they're called in the form. So the first name and it's going to be set to blank initially. Same with last name and same with email. And okay, so now it says use state is not defined. So we need to import it from React up here. If we take a comma, open our curly braces and just type use states just like that and save this and this should be good. Okay, so now it's telling us that these aren't used yet, which is fine because we haven't applied these values to the form. But all we've done so far is we've created a state object and this state object holds first name, last name and email. Now that we have some values in state, it makes sense to apply them to our fields. So we jump down to our JSX and our input, we're going to do value equals and then it's going to be values. So we're going to access this values object and it's going to be dot whatever form field it is. So this one is first name. So it's going to be values dot first name and we're just going to do the same for last name and we'll do the same for email all we've done here is say okay so this input the value is going to be whatever value is in state let's save this and see what is going on in our form just to make sure things are still working and they're not oh no as you can probably hear I'm vigorously typing on my keyboard but nothing's appearing on the screen so what's going on here well We've said that the value of this input is going to be whatever it is in state. So for example, first name is currently set to blank because that's what we set it to, but we haven't told the input, okay, anytime I type or the input changes, I want you to go and update the state with the new value. So whenever we do things like this, it effectively gives control to React. So we have to tell React to update the values. So what we have to do is we have to update these state values anytime we type into these fields. Okay, so the simplest way to do this is to create a handler for each of these input fields which updates the state any time an on change event occurs. So let's do that. We'll just do const handle first name input change and then that's going to take the event which we get from the on change and we're just going to create a function like this and then we're going to do set values and inside set values we're going to we're going to open our braces as we're going to basically update this object and then save it back to state. We will copy the old values by doing the three dots, which is also known as, as the spread operator, the fancy term for it. And then we'll just type values and then we'll do a comma and then we'll say first name is going to be equal to event dot target dot value. Oops. Next, we want to add this to our input. So down in our JSX in the input for first name, we'll take a new line somewhere, anywhere, doesn't really matter and do on change equals handle first name input change. Now, if we go into our browser and start typing, you can see that things work. The rest of them still aren't working because we haven't added handlers for these yet. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Just to recap what's happening, anytime we type into this box, the on change event happens for every keystroke. This gets called every time. The event gets passed in by React. We want to update our state object. So to do that, we call the set values function, pass in a new object, which is what the curly braces are. Firstly, we take a copy of the current object and its properties and its values. And now we're saying, okay, I want to take this copy and I want to change the first name value of the copy to be whatever value was passed in from the event. So this will update the state. So that's why every time you type something, the state updates. And now we just want to do the same for last name. So just call handle last name input change. And then instead of first name, we want to do last name and it's going to be the same. And then we'll just do another one while we're here for email, handle email input change and instead of Last name, we'll do email. So now if we go into our last name input, we do on change, it's gonna be equal to handle last name input change and email, um, email input change. Okay, now is the moment of truth. Is everything working or have we broken something along the way? Let's try it and see. So if I type Chris Blakely and hello, Chris, and everything seems to be working okay. So even though our input fields are working, we still have a funny issue where if we type stuff in the form and try to submit, it's gonna not do anything and just refresh the page and all our form data is lost. So let's do something with that. What we want to do is let's look at our final example, click register, and then it should say success. And all these fields should blank out so that the user can't type anymore. Jump back into our code. What we want to do is go to our JSX just beneath the form tag, add a new div. So again, I've added the classes for you for a success message. So you just have to put the right class name in. Let's type div class name 
equals success message. And then it's gonna say success. Thank you for registering. Now, obviously this isn't gonna go anywhere, but it's just gonna pretend that we've called a server or an endpoint somewhere and it's come back with a success message and we're just gonna display this to the user. So, but it's appearing all the time. So what we want to do is only show this if the user has successfully submitted the form. So we can use a state variable to store this. So we'll keep this separate from the values as it's a different part of the form. So we don't wanna mix everything up in here and cause an entire re-render. So the const, we'll just call this one submitted. So this is gonna tell us whether the form has been submitted or not. And then we'll do set submitted equals use states. And initially it's gonna be set to false because the first time the user lands on the page, it's not gonna be submitted. And now we just want to do some clever stuff down in the JSX to say, if submitted is true, then we want to show the success message. So let's do that. We'll open our braces and we'll say submitted and then we'll use a ternary operator. So that basically is a shorthand if statement that lets us render things dynamically on the page. So we want to copy this div and put it just after the question mark. And then this is the code that's going to run if true. And then if we scroll over after this, we want to put the colon and then say null. As you can see now in the browser, this has disappeared. If we jump back up to our state object for submitted and just change this to true, it should appear again, and it does. Uh, we'll change this back to false, actually. And then we'll refresh our Chrome, and let's just see what happens now. So we haven't told the register button or the form what happens on submit, so it's still gonna refresh, just like that. So now we just need a new handler up in here. So if we jump into our event handlers and do const handle submit, and this is gonna be similar to what we had before. It's gonna take in the event, and now we're just gonna do event that prevent default. That'll stop the refresh from happening that we've seen. So for now, all we're gonna do is just show that message. So we'll add some more logic in here in a minute around validation and stuff. But for now, we're just gonna say set submitted to be true. Okay, so now if we save this, type some stuff and we click register. Wasn't expecting that to happen. Okay, let's have a look. Let's see. Handle submit is declared, but it's never read. So we need to go down to our form and on the form, we want to say on submit. So this is function that gets called whenever the form gets submitted. We just want to do handle submit just like that. And now your error might go away. It will. Hooray. Okay, so our form is looking good so far, but we are missing one key component of any form and that is the, the validation. So if we look at our working example, if I submit this without any stuff, then the errors appear, which says, please enter your details. You didn't submit anything. If we jump back into our code, we want to take a new line after the input and we'll type span and we'll type our error message in here. So for the first name, it's gonna be please enter a first name. So if we work, jump into our working example, you can see this is always appearing because we haven't got any conditional logic to say don't appear. And um, so we just copy this a few times and change it slightly. So after the last name, you wanna just do the same thing. Please enter a last name. And after the email, it's gonna be please enter a email. Okay, now if we save this, all our error messages appear. So now what we want to do is we only want these error messages to, sh error messages to show if the register button has been clicked. Okay, so we'll jump back into the code and we want to add some conditional logic in and around this line of code so that it only appears if the button has been clicked and the field is empty. So if we do similar to what we did with the success message, open some brackets and do submitted because we only want the error to appear if the form has been submitted and the value is empty. So do submit it and then we're going to do values dot first name is falsy. What we'll do is use our ternary again. So we'll do a question mark, paste this in and then we'll do colon null. And then if we save this, this should hide. And then if we click register, it appears. And the, the success message is shown, but we'll fix this in a minute. For now, we just want to fix the rest of these errors. So jump into the code again and do the same for last name. Do submitted and we'll check if values.lastName is empty. If it is, then we'll display the error, else we'll just display no. And same for the email. Leave the form blank and click register, errors appear. If we start typing things, you can see the error disappears. And if we remove what we typed, the error comes back again. So let's try and submit some stuff. Okay, so this seems to be working. The last thing we want to do is just make sure that this success message only appears if the form is valid. So for this, we'll add a new state value. We'll call it valid and set valid. And I'm going to equal to use state and initially it's going to be false since the fields will be false initially down in here we want to do submitted and valid the error message should only appear if submitted is true and valid is also true so since we set valid to false initially it won't show up so in our handle submit function we want to set valid to true if our form is valid so we can do this by checking each of our state values for the form fields making sure that they're a true value so i'll just do if values dot first name and values dot last name and values dot email set valid true so if any of these fields are false then this will stay as false as this one would get run which means the success message dev won't get shown so let's see it working so if we click register with empty fields our error messages show up 
let's type some valid stuff, registered, and hooray, the message appears. Okay, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.